hopefully there's a nice geometric interpretation to go along with these calculations of average rate of change. So again, if I'm looking for how fast is my population growing, near, let's say, B equals two, then I will look for the average rate of change. Let's say between zero and two, or first approximate. Okay. So remember, if we want to find this, so here's my graph here. This is P of P. Again, is E, sorry, E to the T, our function, E of T equals T to the T. That's our function for our population growth from before. And here I'm plotting P versus time. Population in millions of cells versus time hours. Okay, so if I wanted to find the average rate of change between zero, time t equals zero, and time t equals two, then I need to grab those points. Okay, so, okay, here's zero, here's time, it's at four and one. Right, so the average rate of change, recall, was delta P over delta T. Right? So population at time two minus population at time zero over time two minus time zero. So population at time four is four. Population at time zero is one. Time interval is two hours. So this is three over two or 1.5 million cells per hour. Right? That's the average growth rate of this population function over this time interval, right? Over the first two hours, population growth rate is about 1.5 million cells per hour on average. Okay, but if you know, you know, if you look at this equation, what do we do? We computed the change in population divided by the change in time, right? That's equivalent to if we were to connect these two points with a secant line, and computing their slope, right? If I compute the slope of this, right? This is change in P over change in time, right? Rise over run, right? So the slope of the secant, right? The secant line is a line that connects two points along the same curve. Right? If I compute the slope of the secant, right? That's M equals rise over run equals delta P over delta T, which I just computed as 1.5 million cells. Per hour. Okay, so the you know geometric interpretation of the average rate of change between two points is the slope of the secant line between those two points. Okay, and so let's say we really want to know okay how fast the population is growing near time t equals two. Well, then we should probably look a little bit closer to get a better idea. Okay, let me just open my notes. All right, if we wanted to see, find out. Black to find out how fast population is growing at t equals two. We need to look at shorter or closer intervals. Shorter and closer intervals. Okay. Let's look at the average rate change. Right, that'll give us the average growth rate between, let's say, time t equals one and t equals two. Okay, so we're looking a little bit closer. Right, so if I look at these two points, right, time t equals one, two, I connect them with my secant line. All right. So then I want to find the slope of the secant line, which is equivalent to the average rate of change between these two points. That's m equals delta p over delta t, right? Or p at time two minus p at one, divided by my time, right? Two minus one. Those are my two time points. So this one gives me four. p at one, right? I plug one into here, I get two to the one, which is two. Or I read the graph and I say, yep, that's two. T minus four minus two over one tells me that this is two million cells. 
is the growth rate. Uh, that's the average rate of change, right? Average rate of change between t equals one and t equals two of my function p of t equals two, right? And it's equivalent to finding the, sleep, the secant line between these two points and calculating its slope, okay? Let's say we really want to know what the slope is, you know, even closer to two. Okay, so let's look a little bit closer. So let's look between, let's say, 1.5 and t equals 1.5 and t equals 2. If I look at these points, 1.5 is here, 2 is there, so I'm connecting these two points now. I connect those with the secant line, and it's getting closer and closer to 2, right? The secant line is actually looking more and more like our curve. So slope of the secant, or the average rate of change between these two times, n equals delta p over delta t, right? So p at time 2 times p at time 1.5, divided by my time, right? 2 minus 1.5, two time points. Yes. So again, we get 4 minus, I plug in 1.5 into this equation. Or I zoom it off on the graph, which is kind of hard to do, but you know, Desmos, you can like grab this point and it will tell you the value. Okay, so this is 4 minus 2.8 approximately. And then the root divide by the time intervals. This is a half hour time interval. 2 minus 0.5. 1.5 gives me 0 0.5. Okay, so then on top becomes 1.172. 5 which gives me 2.344 million cells per hour as my average growth rate along this short interval here. Okay, and so then let's switch over to decimals for a second. Calculator. Here's my decimal graph. Okay, so here's my graph, 2 to the x. Okay, so now it's x instead of t. So here's 2 to the x, and I'll plot the first secant line. So this is the secant line between 0 and 2, right? And so the slope of the secant line tells us the average growth rate population between these two points in time. And you can see that you grow a little bit slower here and a little bit faster there. This is just the average growth rate over that whole period of time. Okay, and then if I switch to the next secant line, right, I'll get a little bit closer. Off. Right here, my points. 1, 2, and 2, 4. This is the secant line between time 1 and time 2. Right? And you can see that this slope is a little bit closer to what we think the slope would be at near 2. Right? And so this slope of this secant line tells us the average rate of change of the function along this shorter interval. Right? And you can see that, yeah, you're a little bit slower here, but you're a little bit faster there. And so this is just the average rate of change of my function to the x, or 2 to the t, over this short interval, which is length 1 hour. Okay, so then if we get even closer to 2, right, my next one, so this is the one I just computed, right, so this one intersects at 1.5 and 2, so this is the average rate of change between time 1.5 and time 2, and you can see that it's even closer, it's resembling the function even more closely. Right? So the average rate of change along this interval is closer to the actual rate of change of, of my function at that point. Right? Because I'd have to zoom in to really see the difference there. Right? So you can see the difference between these two lines is getting smaller as my points are getting closer together. Okay. So then I'll go one step further. This is this isn't one that we did. Uh, this isn't in the notes, but you know, if you were to do uh, at 1.75 n2, right, the average rate of change between these two times, then you get this secant line, and this secant line looks even more like the actual function near time two, right? You can barely see the difference between these two curves, right? So as I get these points closer and closer together, my average rate of change is going to more and more resemble the you know, instantaneous rate of change of my function at this point. Right? And so if I keep going, if I keep pulling these points closer, finding those secant lines, 
eventually I will only intersect the line, my curve at one point. Oops, I'm not like something. Um, let me put this back. Exactly. Okay. So ignore the function, but it intersects my curve at exactly one point. And this is what's called a tangent line because it just touches the curve at my time t equals two. And so the tangent line, the slope of this line is going to be my instantaneous rate of change. You can kind of think of this tangent line as kind of a limiting, you know, if this was a sequence of sequence lines, right, they're getting closer and closer to this tangent line, right? The slope of this tangent line, right, is the limit of the sequence of slopes. So if I start, right, far away, point in this direction, and then I get closer, right, closer to time, right, my interval's getting shorter, so the slope is kind of approaching what it should be at that point a little more closely, right, I get closer, and the secant line gets a different slope, right, and then I go one step further, right, you can see it's kind of tilting still, right, and then between these last two, there's not much difference, right, these slopes are almost the same, because my secant line is almost to that tangent line. Okay, let me switch. Okay, so, you know, uh, So as our time interval gets shorter, our points are getting closer and closer, you know, and the secant lines resemble the curve near t, t equals 2 better and better. Right? So that's what I just showed in the test line. And the tangent line is the line that touches the curve only at one place, only at t equals 2. Right? And so here I've drawn it again. And you can kind of see that our secant lines that I just showed, they're approaching that tangent line. Right? So the tangent line is sort of the limit of that sequence of secant lines. And then the slope of the tangent line would then be the limit of those sequence of slopes. And we can think of the slope of the tangent line as kind of defining the instantaneous rate of change of our function at this point. And we'll get into this instantaneous rate of change and you know these tangent lines in the next couple of weeks. So that's kind of you know the geometry of what's happening when we're doing these rates of change and we're getting closer and closer to these points.